Let's do it. It's ghosticles time. It's ghosticles time. It's ghosty, mosty, mosticles. Ghosticles time. <laughs> and it doesn't have anything to do with testicles. Yeah. Well, now it does. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wasn't even thinking that, but now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a song that I sing whenever, like, I'm looking at emails in my head. It's, it's ghosticles time. It's ghosticles time. I don't is know why. Like, is it like, please tell me it's orchestrated with, like, a big brass band behind you and there's, like, confetti falling down? There's definitely confetti. Okay. There's definitely. It's ghosticles time. Right. But, like, the first three notes are our acapella and then the band comes in afterwards i like this yeah a little uh, a little acapella and a crucis what those words mean it's a, i don't even know if i used it correctly <laughs> it's a, i don't know you it's should... a snobby musical term well look at me trying to be smart not a surprise I should stop. <laughs> but you know you know musical terms that i don't know i know a little bit i didn't i didn't go to school to be a pianist <laughs> learn how to i went to school to learn how to use my piano <laughs> <laughs> sure you did <laughs> i bet you did michael <laughs> what's the joke about the guy at the bar and he's like there's a lamp at the end of the bar and on the other side of the lamp is like a tiny little piano with a guy that's like six, six inches tall playing it and he's like dude you should the bartender's like, you know, you should rub that lamp. And he does. And a big genie comes out and offers to grant him a wish. And he's like, OK, um, I want a million bucks. And the genie's like, cool, done. And like claps his hands and disappears. And then suddenly there's this huge racket at the door. And they got to open it. And like all these ducks come pouring into the bar and like they shoo them out. And the guy's like, what the fuck is with that genie? And the guy's like, he's deaf. Like he can he's hard of hearing. Well, yeah. He's like, do you think I asked for a six inch penis? <laughs> Da, 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 da. Woo! <laughs> that's have, not the story I wanted to tell I've you. Heard that? Hey, that's Michael Tatum. Oh yeah, hey, you probably know that by know. now. But, but hi, just so you know, just so you know, in the right place. Yes, it's Michael Tatum, and that is. I'm Jamie Markey. I pointed at her when she, I said that, so you couldn't. I know you couldn't see it because it's, it's. You felt the energy <laughs> shift from one microphone to the other. I know you did. Everybody felt it, Michael. They could feel it. They could feel it. They feel it. They the show. The magic. show impacts their emotions. That's right. It's true enough. Mm-hmm. We I, have have some, sto- I have a story about that I very know, thing that I'm going to read emails. first. Go, Michael, go! I love this one. This is from Allie. And Allie writes, fucking okay. <laughs> Strong opening, Allie. It is. Really. It is. Fucking okay. So in the episode seven of Ghosticles, there were several submissions about weird things happening while someone was listening to the podcast. Mm-hmm. As I was listening, I felt I heard another voice coming through my speaker. Uh, first, I thought I was imagining things. It started out faint, then it got louder and louder, and eventually it sounded like Michael was echoing himself. I do that a lot. Um, I paused the podcast. It does in my head, for sure. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just do it for effect. Yeah. Um, I paused the podcast, and one small echo came out of my speaker before all went quiet. I said out loud, no thank you! <laughs> Because I'm a daycare provider, and that's how I scold my kids for annoying me. <laughs> I love it. No, thank you. Uh, I pressed play, and the echoing stopped. Could easily have been an issue with my phone or speaker, but I found it strange that it happened as you guys were joking about the podcast being haunted. Right. So about that. <laughs> Do we have an actually? Um, I mean, it's more like an I'm sorry. <laughs> A, a whoopsie is not a ghost. A whoopsie is not a ghost. So, and I don't, I can't tell you what happened, but um, I do the editing. And so I'm sorry if you don't like it. <laughs> Let's just fucking deal with it because I'm doing the best I fucking can. <laughs> and it's not stressful at all. Um, <laughs> but not, not at I'm all. learning not a lot. All. I'm learning. We are, we are both learning so much about right. all of this shit just as we go. So thank you for, for putting up. New with skill. Us. New skills. New skills. So what happened was um, I was editing it. And when I listened to it, it was fine. And even... The, you know, because for those of you who don't know, at the end of Ghosticles, uh, we've started adding little outtakes or something uh-huh. funny. And so there was this funny clip that uh, we added to the very end of it. And that didn't even uh, get the whole thing. So something weird was happening mm. with mm. my computer. Um, things that I should have been a- able to edit, I wasn't able to edit. 
then the so what what happened is there are two different sound files because we have two two different microphones right. and at some point part of it uh just shifted maybe a little bit to the left or the right so he sounds like he's overlapping himself because he's being picked up by both microphones so it's the sound of him and his mic and then him coming out of my microphone and i don't know why that happened it's uh it happened after i had edited everything and heard it all um, it certainly didn't happen in the process of my yeah. editing. So sometime between that and me getting it back now, that doesn't mean that something couldn't have gone wonky or I touched something that moved it or something like that. There's, I mean, it could be anything, but uh, it was, the, it's weird. It's a digital ghost. Right. I I want to say we did it on purpose to scare you guys. Ha 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 ha. Mm-hmm. But I didn't. But it was accidentally. It was totally purpose. an accident. I'm sorry. It was a purposeful uh, accident. But isn't, wasn't that fun to think that it, the podcast was haunted on accident? And, and we don't know that it isn't. No, it may still be haunted. Because, you know, it was several things at once. But also Mercury's in retrograde, you guys. That's right. And if you're listening to this podcast already, odds are you are sensitive to this kind of stuff happening. So mm-hmm. you're going to you're going to see it because it you've already you're in a place where this odd things kind of fit a little You've easier into your <laughs> it's too late for you motherfuckers join us for the you, ride i prefer to think in terms of you're already in a place where you've accepted weird things and so you can roll them up into your worldview easily so your brain doesn't repress them the way most people do it's, like it's yeah. weird, like a weird thing happens like i think weird thing happens weird shit happens to people all the time we're just really really good at blocking it out yeah, unless either- we make an effort to see it it's just, it's that, or it's like, chin up, fuckers, this is what it is now. Welcome to it. Right. Welcome to the ghostly party. I highly recommend any time you have to, like, cheer someone up, just be like, chin up, fucker. <laughs> it works. It like works. A ch- when I'm in the dumps, that's exactly what I need you to say to me. I will. Chin up, fucker. Chin up, fucker. <laughs> chin up. Um, okay, okay. <laughs> I don't think that will never not make me laugh, even when I am in the dumps. <laughs> I know, see? I'm going to be like, fuck work. you. Oh, wait, now I'm mad instead yes. of depressed, and that's slightly better. Now my chin is up because I'm raging. <laughs> and yet now you feel better, so Purpose you're welcome. Achieved. That's right. I won't be able to, <laughs> to say you're welcome in the moment because you'll be mad at me, so I'm just going to take this moment right now and say you're welcome for all those times that I irritate you out of your sorrow. <laughs> That's why we're friends. That's right. Okay, okay. So I We have, irritate each other to be our best selves. That's right. Best living our best lives by <laughs> driving each other crazy. <laughs> it's perfect. Okay. All right, what's your story? What's your story? It's from Gigi. I think it's Gigi. I hope so. It's a great name. I know. It's so good. Okay. J-I-J-I. We moved here. I don't know where here is. I'm assuming it's her house. <clears throat> you say that. I'm like, I'm looking around the room. Like, we where moved are they? here into my home. She lives in a corner. Her whole family. Uh, <laughs> it's like Harry Potter. That's right. We moved here in this house. Oh, I could have read the, the next three words. <laughs> cold reading reading. okay we moved here in this house when i was two weeks old 17 years ago well happy birthday Gigi. i'm gonna be very literal with that uh ever since i was a child i would have strange things happen to me lights turning off and doors closing by themselves but as i've grown the ghostly activity has become more frightening yeah, previously I would say that's helpful. Like, thank you for opening and closing that door. Like the barn door thing, right? Right, right. Um, okay. There was a time when I would wake up every night at 3 a.m. and my room is right next to the stairs. So I would hear whenever someone was walking up the stairs. Mm-hmm. I don't like where this is headed. Mm-hmm. Slash, I love where this is headed. <laughs> it's, it's like, this is a great story to have happened to someone else. I know. I love that it didn't happen to me. Uh, sorry, Gigi. But when the clock turned 3 a.m., I would hear heavy footsteps walking up the stairs. Bum, bum, bum. The creaks in the wood would scare the shit out of me, and it would always stop whenever it got to my door. <laughs> <laughs> The most. <laughs> the it's most... like you're like a news anchor reading the yeah. story for the first time, and you're like, and a family of four was murdered in their home. Murdered. <laughs> Why um, is this the first time you're saying this? Okay, I would stop at her door. The most Sorry. frightening thing that has happened to me was last year. One night, I had a dream that I was sitting at my desk that was in the living room, and I looked up for a minute, and there was a ghostly apparition standing there, staring at me, and I immediately woke up from my sleep. I didn't think much of it and went on with my day, went to school, and everything seemed normal. 
when I got home, I sat at my desk and was going to start working when I had a feeling of someone staring at me. And I looked up, and in the exact same spot was that little girl again. Nope. I wasn't imagining it. It was the same apparition from my dream. She had red eyes and dark hair. Double nope. I was in a state of fear, obviously, and stared at her until... I heard my mother call my name, and then she was gone. And ever since then, I've seen more shadows, and they were shadows of a little girl, as well as a large man holding her hand. Triple nope. Yeah. I've always had a feeling that someone watches me when I'm in my house. I can't really explain it. My mother thinks it's just one of our past family members watching over us, and I could believe that, but why would one of our family members want to scare and mess with me so badly? And I can't really understand why a little girl would follow me around, of all things. I can definitely tell that these experiences have made me a little jumpy, especially when I'm alone. Footsteps always walk into my parents' room, and I can hear them from downstairs, but only when I'm home alone and no one is upstairs. Mm -hmm. My family thinks I have some sort of gift. (laughs) I don't know if she meant it like that, but my family thinks I have some sort of gift, but I'm like, bullshit. It's an ironic term. Last part. Uh, (laughs) She is a gift, or I'm connected to these spirits somehow, and I'm starting to think so too, as a wine glass has just recently broken without explanation a few days ago. I'm still not sure why these things happen to me, but I sometimes look around my house and wonder what kind of secrets it holds, as I know nothing of its history. I wonder if I'll ever find out why I'm targeted. Maybe one day I will know why. Ooh. Research your house, GG. Right, the the shadows that bothers me. Yeah, like the well, dude and, and the little girl together. That's that's a weird. That's a weird pairing. I mean, it just makes me like I'm I'm dark, so I immediately go to like he murdered her. Mm. He murdered this little girl, and they're like you know whatever. I don't know. Maybe not. Who knows? Maybe it's a, a different universe. Maybe. Maybe it's the people who lived there. This is what's happening. I've decided. (laughs) It's a time slip. So it's the people who lived in that house before or Mm. in that building before. A father and a daughter. Perfectly fine. He's taking her to bed. They're walking in and they look. Or he's taking her somewhere. Mm -hmm. He's walking with her somewhere. Maybe they're going to leave. I don't know. But they go through the living room. And she's sitting there in the middle of their living room. and And so he holds her hand. Because why the fuck is this chick? Who's wearing pants in the living room? Because clearly it's from a... I can see her ankles. Right. And so it's it's traumatic for both of them. So both of them are seeing each other out of time. Weird. That's what I've decided in this And there's moment. a weird filter in the, in the, like, the portal between mm-hmm. dimensions so that it makes your eyes look red. Yeah. It's I mean, like a maybe. filter. Yeah. Maybe. Or maybe Ooh, she was like crying. That. I don't know. Well, I see. That's not what I think. When I think red eyes, I think like red glowing eyes. But I'm, that's, right. I'm projecting that on there. Maybe it is. Maybe she meant. But and she could have picked it up as red eyes because she sees how red these girls' eyes are. But mm. um, it could be maybe she has brown eyes or something like that. And it just blends together. So it just she just maybe. sees red. So it's what you see and you recognize mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. your brain is putting together, not necessarily what is there and that's such a fast that is yeah that is interesting i man i love it and there's all and there's no there's no way of knowing that what you're actually seeing is a representation of what whatever it is actually looks like right you know what i mean because it's like it's it maybe it just takes on the form of a little girl holding the hand of a of a man but maybe it's something else entirely that's very true and what's with the dream exactly weird it's so weird maybe the dream maybe the dream what maybe she had a dream that she was gonna be in a time slip, so she's psychic and she can slip through time. This is a lot of responsibility, Gigi. I'm sorry, but you're just gonna have to deal with it and then tell us everything. With great gifts come yes. great responsibility. That's right, Spider-Man. All right. So the next story is from um, Jennifer. She says, "Hi, my name is Jennifer, and Hi, I'm Jennifer. from Coldwater, Mississippi. Um, I'd like to start by saying I'm a huge fan of both your podcast and voice acting. You two have been a huge inspiration to me, so thank you very much. You're, oh, you're welcome. welcome. Thank you." You guys have mentioned your theory about some people being more sensitive to the paranormal because of illness and whatnot. I suffer from a condition called uh, dysautonomia, depression, and anxiety. I'm sorry to hear that. And I'm pretty much homebound. I have had a lot of harmless but scary or annoying experiences with ghosts in my home, mainly in or around my bed. The rest of the family has also witnessed some paranormal activity here. In the other encounters with ghosts and spirits, I have only felt and heard the activity, uh, though once years ago I also saw and felt a hand. 
Just a few nights ago, while I was at my great aunt's house, I saw a very clear ball of light. Uh, I was with my mother doing laundry. My aunt is currently in a nursing home, so it was just the two of us there for a few hours. At the time, my mother and I were in the living room watching anime on my laptop. Like uh, it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Out of nowhere, I felt the need to look towards the doorway that led into the living room from the kitchen. When I looked to the doorway, my eyes instantly fixed on a sort of clear, glowing object that was floating across the floor. Ooh. The object was roughly the size of a basketball. Uh, only the front was glowing white, and the back was clear but visible, almost like a very large bubble. Wow. I watched it float from the doorway across the entire living room and disappear in front of the couch on the side my mother was sitting on. Uh, it almost felt like I forgot to. Uh, it almost felt like I'd forgotten how to speak until the orb disappeared. I wanted to point it out to my mom before uh, it was gone, but I couldn't. We're both very interested in the paranormal and get very excited whenever one of us has an encounter. I love that. I bet, yeah. Um, We've had many shared experiences, so I'm a little bummed that I was the only one to see this. Not necessarily important to the story, but that night on the way home, it was extremely foggy, and there was a full moon to add to the creepiness. Nice. Wow. Maybe she was about to be visited by, like, Glenda the Good Witch of the North. Oh, uh, that would have been so nice. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. But that's it's weird, like, for an orb to take it. Yeah, the description. Orb. That's really... And so big. Because, you know... Basketball times, size. That's yeah. gigantic. Because most of the time, like, you can easily, like, oh, that's a dust moat or something. But, yeah. like, when you see, like, a fucking, like, that ain't, that ain't no dust, dust moat. Mode. No. And and a lot of times, like, and especially on cameras and stuff, if you see an orb, most of the time it's like, all right, well... It's an insect um, flying by the fucking lens, you know, whatever. Yeah, like, it's, there's a spider web. Orbs don't generally convince me, but... But, but if they're the size of a fucking basketball. Well, and she and it was it's not in a picture. She literally saw it. And yes. I think, too, you know, you can see something and be like, is that an orb? And it, maybe it's a reflection of the light. Maybe something, you know, but that's. But if it's moving. It's reflecting the size of a basketball. That is something else to be concerned about entirely, if and that's the case. light usually doesn't play like that. It doesn't no. float across the floor through space. It, like, has to project yeah. onto solid something. objects, right? Yeah. I don't know. It's ball lightning, swamp gas, Venus. <laughs> that's Fly what, traps. That's what skeptics say. Yeah. It all boils down to just skeptics just going, no. Nah. I don't. That's, that's you not. You didn't. No. Nah. Right. Prove it. But I do. I do wonder if there's a connection between people that have illnesses of some kind and maybe they're more sensitive to the sort of, you know, activity. Right. Well, and for I think, whatever reason. you know, uh, to be honest with you, that. Michael and I both suffer from depression mm -hmm. and anxiety. And so the depression comes and goes. It grabs hold, though, when it grabs Ooh, hold. it does. It's um, a squeeze. But anxiety is pretty high for both of us. Yeah. I actually like, like, I want to go to the airport with Michael so he will be more anxious than me. And that makes me feel better. I'll be, and I'll then, be your anxiety lightning yeah. rod. And Michael likes to go with me to crowded places so that he feels confident with my anxiety. Yes. It really works out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we offset each other's most anxious environments. It's true. I think it's very true. But I think it's, it's worth noting that in traditional societies, shaman or the equivalent were almost always people that had been ill at some point mm -hmm. that, and that mm -hmm. was that their illness was thought uh, by the, the society to have gifted them with second sight right. or the ability to well, that's that go whole, into the spirit, you realm. know, near death experience yeah. will open you up that lift the veil. Mm -hmm. And it's almost, I feel like, especially with depression and anxiety, there's an empathy there mm -hmm. that maybe you experience for other people yeah. that maybe makes you more sensitive to living breathing people that will also make you more sensitive to uh just environments entirely yeah. and we've talked about it plenty as an actor all sure. we deal with is energy and giving it back and receiving it and stealing it from the audience for our own powers Whoa! but recycling it. it's recycling um <laughs> yeah but i think you know you can you know we've talked about this a lot too you walk into a room you know something has happened in that room you like, can feel it you can feel it and uh in i think it's the same thing with any kind of, if you are sensitive to that kind of thing, it doesn't matter what it is. You are sensitive to it, mm -hmm. period, mm -hmm. the end. And it, and so, um, yeah, I, I think that there's definitely something. It's interesting about that. Like, is, is it the illness that makes you more sensitive? Or more is it your sensitivity, sensitivity that, that maybe makes you react to everything differently? Um, or they just don't really have anything to, to do with each other? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, and, and yeah, it's it's That's interesting. I do think that there has to be a relationship there yeah. somewhere. I think there has to be correlation. I just don't know whether, you know, what which came first, you know, does one sensitivity to the other side maybe 
you know, is it just, do they just happen to be existing in the same person or do they affect each other directly? Right. You know? Yeah. Like, is it just a byproduct or is it a cause? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Either way, don't try to get sick for any kind of... Yeah, that's not how it works. No, just like meditate and shit. Do that instead. It's easier. Yeah. Uh, Okay. (laughs) (laughs) What we're saying is... Thank you for that story, Jennifer. Yeah, very good story. And, And, you know, We hope that you are doing wonderfully and taking care of yourself and that... that However it's supposed to work out, it will work out that way. Yes. Yeah. Um, And that will be in your favor. Uh, Okay, so this is from Kate. I live in a studio apartment with two roommates and my dog. On the weekends, my dog. dog. On the weekends, I am usually all by myself as they prefer to go home during the weekends. There have been about three instances where I felt I was not alone during my roommate's absence. Fun! Uh, Yay, Kate. The first (laughs) occurred early early on during the school year. It was a Friday night and I was getting ready for bed. As I closed my laptop and took out my headphones, I heard, hmm, if no one's there, why are you listening to headphones? That's, sorry, not at all related to the story. It's all I do that sometimes. You listen to headphones when nobody's there? I can hear better. Oh. I can hear better. It's more immersive that way. I suppose. You know what it is? I don't love a headphone. I feel Mm. like my ears are suffocating. Oh, well, then that would be a problem for you. I have to. I don't think mo- I don't think most people feel that way. Oh uh, well, all right. I think most people feel headphones because then you can like walk around and not like mm-hmm. have to like the sound quality doesn't change. I I love headphones even if I'm alone. Oh, I just Bluetooth it to through my mm. Amazon Alexa. Don't. Hi tell. Alexa. Don't. Oh, she bleeped. Alexa, tell us a joke. <laughs> Did you hear about the pink Stegosaurus? No. It stuck out like a dinosaur thumb. Mm. She's not good at jokes. I mean, I want her to win. I really want to laugh I, at that. I know. It's... And I'm gonna. I'm, but I also don't want to laugh at it because I don't want to encourage this behavior. I know. <laughs> Let's see, Alexa, tell us a ghost story. Ghost cow. There's a hilltop on a pasture somewhere far, far away. Well, is this... Where no one will I venture to work or play. But why, you might ask, since the grass is so green, the sky so blue, the whole scene so what is going I don't know on? what's happening. Because of a ghost cow who haunts the land. It's a ghost cow. When other cows tip, she will stand. She stands in the sun and the wind and the rain, munching on grass and crunching on grain. And she waits all the while for you to walk by, to give you a scare and maybe a cry. Because <laughs> since ghost cow crossed over, she no longer says moo, but rather cries out. Most frightening. <laughs> <laughs> that was a funny joke. That, that was, was that, that was fucking funny. And it wasn't it we asked for a ghost story. She gives a ghost story, a joke, and a rhyming and, poem. And it's topical. I'm sure that's Devin Unionist's cow that he's suing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and the cow just like eat more chicken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck that place. Oh, God. Anyway, yeah. okay. sorry. So, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, I completely and utterly digressed, and I apologize. We're talking about headphones. I'm really sorry. Headphones. We're talking about headphones, headphones. and we, start, we ended with with being uh, told a story about story. a ghost cow. I like it. This is what you can expect from <laughs> us. This is the quality content only knows. we can provide. That's right. Uh, <laughs> welcome to our Saturday. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, she took out her headphones. Uh, I heard a noise coming from the living area. I froze. It's not scary. No. I'm so- <laughs> <laughs> yes, come on. Dig okay. deep. Dig deep. Okay. Okay, I'm digging deep. This, okay. This, this, okay. I'm, I'm going to laugh all the time. I can't. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm okay. We're, it's, we're very I'm early into this story. Me. It's okay. It's totally okay. She's by herself, you guys. She's wearing headphones alone, which is terrifying because how do you hear if somebody breaks in? Oh, well, then why do you got to say it like that? I'm, no, I don't want to do it anymore. Well. God welcome, damn it, Jamie. Welcome to being a woman. Okay. This sucks. She also has a dog. You have a dog. He'll let you know if anybody comes in. My, my dog? We are digressing. I'm trying to get back onto okay, this sorry. story. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to forget the cow. There's a cow, and it's dead. Also, no, it's Kate sad. Is, it's ghosting. It's booey <laughs> people. Um, and it doesn't get cow tipped, which seems to be important to that story. It's an empowered cow. It is. It is. All right. So okay. by yourself. By yourself. Headphones, headphones on. out. She hears a noise. 
coming from the living area. Mm. I froze. It sounded as if someone was shuffling through the papers I had left on the dinner table. My mm. dog kept his eyes fixed on the closed door of my bedroom, growling oh, loudly. No. I slowly got out of my bed and grabbed the only weapon my dumbass had, a metal water bottle. I like your spirit. I'd like, too, that you know you need a weapon. It's important. I don't know why I thought that would help, but it gave me the courage to creep towards my door. Threw my door open, turned on the hall light, and raised my water bottle into the air, ready to hit anything that moved. Nothing. The living room, kitchen, and dining room were all empty. The papers on the table were disheveled and not in the neat pile I had left them in. I tried to assure myself that I was just imagining things, got my dog to come back with me, and closed my door firmly. The next occurrence happened over my winter break. Now, over winter break, I stayed in the apartment so that I could work through break while my roommates went home. One evening, I was laying on the couch with my dog and watching some Netflix. My dog stared at a corner of the room, growling and barking. Don't like it. This dog is freaking You gotta get rid of the dog. That's the problem. <laughs> then you'll never know. Thinking he was just being a brat, I, told, I tried getting him to stop. After many failed attempts, I finally called out, as a joke, if there's anything here, can you please stop it? You're scaring my dog. My dog stopped barking. Suffice it to say, I gathered my stuff and spent the rest of the night in my room with the door locked. I like it. And the dog outside. <laughs> <laughs> the last experience I had was a few weeks later. It was almost New Year's. It was almost New Year's. It was almost New Year's. Anyway, and I was video chatting <laughs> with my friends. New year. It was almost the New Year. And I was, <laughs> it was almost the New Year? The New Year. <laughs> <laughs> I've never thought about it until just now. And now I was video obsessed. chatting with my friends back home. I couldn't go to our usual winter sleepover, so I had to settle with talking over Messenger. As I started shifting to get up and heat up some leftovers, one of my friends teasingly asked who I had over. <laughs> I, don't like it. I smiled, thinking they wanted to see my dog. I flipped the camera around so they could see him and said it was just me and him. My friends went quiet. They asked me if I was sure I didn't have anyone over. I again stated that no one else was there or outside either. They then told me, I have goosebumps, they heard a man's voice apparently mm. talking to me. No. I played it no. off, not wanting to believe it. After we said goodbye, I once again hightailed it to my room, yep. dog in tow, and locked the door. That was my last experience. However, when welcoming a new roommate, I joked that the place was haunted. My original roommate looked at me with wide eyes and asked, You felt it too? I then explained all my previous experiences, and she explained to me that she feels as if someone is watching her whenever she's alone in the house. She usually has to have something playing on her laptop and have the door shut to feel comfortable. I don't know what is in this apartment, but I'm hoping it continues its current silence until we move out. Ooh. Kate. Roommates, y'all gotta talk. I hope that if something else happens, you continue sending us messages. Oh my gosh. Oh my All God. right, who you got? I Last have, but not least. Last but not least, I have, okay, this is a good one. This is from uh, Tara. And Tara says, it was the 1960s, a few years before my mother was born in 74. Um, thanks for telling us Ouch. how old your mother is. Hold on, um, heartburn, immediate. <sighs> Continue. <laughs> my grandmother and grandfather had just moved into a new house. It was two stories, like the one they live in now, with a ground floor and a basement. Five. A basement. For the most part, the house was normal. Sure, maybe the price was a bit low, but it wasn't in the greatest part of the neighborhood, and houses were cheap in Oregon in the 1960s. It was normal. Until you got to the basement, that is. It may seem cliche, but the basement was decidedly not normal. When my grandmother or grandfather would go downstairs, the lights would flicker sporadically. Mm -hmm. Their dog, Sheila, refused to go downstairs and would, bark what's up. and would bark and growl, absolutely terrified if anyone tried to force her down them. Uh, maybe uh, that could all be explained away. Faulty wiring, plenty of dogs don't like stairs, etc. Didn't mean anything, did it? Did it? Mm, I don't know. But it all came to a head one day when my grandmother was in the basement. She was in her pajamas and a bathrobe, and she was standing beside the stove. Maybe she was doing her laundry, or she was digging into the second refrigerator. I know that both of those things are currently in the house where they live now. At any rate, she was distracted and wasn't paying attention to the stove. Why would she? It wasn't turned on. When she looked up again, her robe had caught fire. No! When she finally put the flame out... Oh, finally, that makes it sound like it took her a few minutes. God, that's terrifying. I don't like it. When she finally put the flame out, she looked at the stove. Uh, uh, it wasn't even plugged in, and the top <gasps> wasn't hot. There was no plausible connection to her robe. 
so how had her rope caught? So how had her rope caught? Maybe. So how had her rope caught fire? She couldn't figure it out. My grandparents moved out not too long afterwards, spooked, leaving that godforsaken basement behind. Fuck later, <laughs> like a basement. Um, later, they started doing research on the house, having heard a few odd rumors, and it came to light that perhaps there had been something in the basement after all. Something sinister. <sighs> Before my grandparents moved in, a man had lived there with his wife and mother-in-law. Ooh, okay, I see where this is going. <laughs> and one day, he snapped. He grabbed a gun and took his wife and her mother down to the basement. He proceeded to shoot his wife in front of his mother-in-law and then shot her point-blank at close range as well. Afterwards, he either came to his senses or just didn't want to go to prison, and he turned the gun on himself. Wow. A murder-suicide had happened in that basement, and my grandparents never found out until they were gone. It makes you wonder, what else do real estate agents not tell you? <laughs> Was there more than one specter in that basement, just biding their time, waiting for the perfect moment to strike? Who knows? Whether or not there was one ghost or three, there was something down there. Oh my gosh. You know, in the state of Texas, unless that's changed, they have, you can... You have to request You it. have to, yeah, but they have to tell you. They have if to it's tell a, you. you have, they have to tell you or they're They have liable. to tell you, okay, so they have to tell you if somebody's been murdered. Yes. In your home. Mm-hmm. They do not have to tell you about natural deaths. They don't have to tell you about, no. you know, any anything, suicides but, or anything like that, but it's murder. If they, if there are stories connected to the house about hauntings, they have to tell you if you ask or they're, they're liable. Yes. And that's and because I think that's, that's there's not, a lawsuit. Yeah. There is a lawsuit that's on the books for that very thing that was not that long ago. No. I think it only happened in the nineties. And I don't know if it was in Texas, but there is a law that it, there are laws created because of this, this guy suit. He does not believe in ghosts, but his wife did. And after they moved in, they were told it was haunted. Mm. And so he sued the original owners for not disclosing that it was haunted. And they won. Mm. He didn't even believe it was. But his point was his wife believed it was haunted at that point. Mm -hmm. And so once she thought it was haunted, they couldn't live there anymore. And uh, had they disclosed it, they never would have bought the house Mm. because she she wouldn't have wanted to live there. So that's part of why that is. But, yeah, you'd always crazy. It's yeah, it is crazy. But you. You have to ask, though. Yeah, you do have. Yeah, they're they not. I mean, it's just, a real estate. They're not just yeah. going to tell you. No, I mean. but I'm. You know, I bet real estate agents have some good stories because you know they have to go in by themselves a lot and oh, get yeah. there, especially if they're doing an open house mm-hmm. or just doing mm-hmm. tours or like I've read too. There's stories about people who do uh, photographs mm-hmm. for the for uh, real estate agents. They'll go so they like go into the homes and take pictures that go up online and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And they're they're. They're real uh, friendly with those angles. It's like, oh, this room looked like it was 20 feet, and it turns out it's four. Yeah, it turns out <laughs> it's it was like, a fisheye oh, lens. That's a really great angle. Um, <laughs> but they will go in to the houses by themselves, and, you know, sometimes shit happens yeah. in that situation. So I want to hear, like, I want to do, like, I've, if it's possible, I want to do a whole story on real estate agents that have had experiences. Oh, my gosh. That would be amazing. You know they're out there. Send if you're listening. us your stories. Submit your stories. If you're a mother or your grandmother or your grandfather or your father, anyone in your family is a real estate agent, <laughs> um, ask them. Yeah. Just ask them and then send us their stories because I bet they have some. Or they know somebody who does. Yeah. There's always yeah. stories. There's nurse. always stories. And nurses. Nurses always have good stories. Nurse. Yeah, especially nurses. Oh, yeah. Oof. Or doctors, either one. Um, mm. But anyway, yeah, mm. that mm. that whole, oof, knowing ahead of time. I did a lot of uh, looking around to see if anything happened in my place. I kind of want, I want to live in a house that's haunted. I don't think you'll have a choice. Well, I mean, okay. But you yeah. want one with history? I want one with history. What, but you want like a violent history or kind of? I don't, I don't well, kind of. The, 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 the freak in me kind of wants a house that's got like a sinister history to the it. The freak. Just, what he means is the 90s goth in him wants to have. It's true. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's so true. I want to live in a haunted house because it's haunted because there's like 18 people like, you know, killed themselves so they could go to space i don't know like i like yeah that's that's stupid that and sensitive so of me to say but it's true but it's, like i want i just want to see what it's okay. like i want i'm like i don't want that thing to have happened but if it's already happened what i want to see like, what it feels like after. airbnb it, it for a week or two <laughs> <laughs> it's probably far more reasonable yeah do that just airbnb it. yeah because i'm like okay yeah this isn't me do airbnb based on haunted houses like i'm airbnb, sure someone has is, to we are gonna look that shit up <laughs> yes we are I'm very it's airbnb <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, this is 
is a long episode. Okay, well, thanks, guys, for listening. This is a uh, Ghosticles. Ghosticles eight. eight. I don't remember. It's something like that. Who it's knows? A Number, numbers. It's just a Ghosticles episode. They'll figure it out. Yeah, we're too drunk to know what we're doing. <laughs> We're right. not operating heavy machinery. Yes, thank God for that. Oh, oh, oh. And remember. It's, it's okay, okay to sleep, sleep with the, the lights, lights on. on. Jiggle a little, little, little wiggle. Jiggle it. Jiggle a little. Jig, jiggle it a little, little wiggle. Jiggle it a little, little wiggle. <laughs> Isn't it fun to say? Just jiggle it a little, little wiggle. <laughs> just jiggle it a little, little, little wiggle. Just jiggle it a little, little, little wiggle. There you I go. Just jiggle it a little, little wiggle. Just jiggle it a little, little wiggle. Yeah. <laughs> it's just one of my favorite things to That's hear people fun. try to say. And it just sounds like you're having a stroke. It's accurate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay.